we're in Pombinet. We're two and a bit hours out of Melbourne. We're out in the Western District of Victoria. If I can set the scene for coming down here, driving along, there's no town to speak of. There are a few scattered buildings around. There's rolling green fields and then this cricket club appears out of nowhere and, and we pull in and, and here's Luke Reynolds who's running this place, this absolutely gorgeous club that's this oasis in, in the middle of the field. So tell us about living down here in Pombo. Yeah, well, welcome to Pombo Neat, Jeff. Great to have you down here. And, and uh, yeah, look, we're pretty proud of our little club and our facilities here in a, you know, a dairy farming community and um, yeah, proud of what we've been able to build here. How many teams have you got going? Because I'm of the understanding this is a big club in the in the scheme of things? Yeah, we've got 12 teams at the moment, so uh, seven men's and boys teams and five women's and girls teams, uh, and in addition to a Woolworths Blast program for five to 10 year olds, so <laughs> it's pretty hectic. What's the population of the town though? Uh, the Pomodic District has about 191, okay. so that's nearly everyone playing cricket. How do, you, <laughs> how do you get a dozen teams out of that sort of population? What, how does this work? Well, we're not far out of Camperdown, so there's a lot of families in Camperdown with a historical link to out here, and we've been able to attract a lot of juniors from those guys as well and friends of and, and, and worked hard on our junior program and women's program over the past few years to build and that up. They're willing to travel out here to be part of what you've got going. Yeah, they, they are at the moment. So uh, yeah, we've got to work hard to keep them out here now. Yeah. I've got Pombo Bulls legend Grant Place with me, a uh, triple premiership player. You've got a long association with this place. You, you've effectively grown up in these four walls, haven't you? Correct, yeah. yeah I grew up where neighbouring farm, just over the road, over the highway, so been here since I was a kid. And Father played here, uncles played here, and yeah, loved the joint. Seems remarkable to me that, that, a, that a town that feels small, I mean, you look at it on the map, it doesn't feel like Pombo is a big place, yet it's got this extraordinary cricket club that comes up in conversations all the time around this part of Victoria. This is the town really, the, the club, there's, you know, there's no store, there's no pub, this is probably the, the centre piece of Pomponet. Isn't that brilliant that like yeah. that this sort of modest clubhouse, I mean beautiful as it is but modest and this cricket ground out here can, can constitute the lifeblood of an entire community, it feels a bit, bit of a throwback. It's a different way of life than living in the city um, where you can you know, catch an Uber to the nearest pub for a sure. catch up. This is this is where guys are catching up, you know, albeit you can go to the town, go into Camperdown to the pub to catch up and go to others' houses, but this is where, um, you know, we tend to come in summer to, to catch up and have a drink and enjoy each other's company. Looking around this, the club rooms here, I mean, there's a very strong sense of history. You've got your, your, your life members, you've got um, club administrators. Uh, talk me through what's up on the walls here. Like, if we start over here. So these are our honour boards. Um, in need of an update, they only date back to 1974-75. So we do have plans to put up new honour boards that will date back to 1894-95, where we've gone back and found presidents, captains, secretaries all the way through. So we think it's important to honour those guys who put in back in the day. So uh, yeah, they will be getting replaced sometime soon, I hope. It's been a big journey over about six years now, but uh, yeah, look, we've, we're nearly there. We've nearly put together the whole record. Uh, everything was there from 1969 onwards, so I've just had to piece together what came before that, so. A lot of premierships up on this wall. Seems like there's been a lot of success at this club. Do we do we find you? Is there a young Luke Reynolds in some of these? There is a young Luke Reynolds in uh, the 1994-95 premiership. Been lucky enough to play in a couple of Division One flags and a T20 flag as well, so that obviously the highlights of your career. You're running the club effectively, you're running the bar, you're, uh, you're, your name's on the website as the contact point, you're doing the history, like why does this club mean so much to you? Why do you want to put so much of your time and effort into it? I grew up here, so I've been, he been coming to the club since I was eight or nine years old, I've been playing here since I was 12. I've loved every minute, uh, I've just felt at home the whole time and now I've got my boys, my wife and now my daughter also made her de debut yesterday. <laughs> really? So, so there's five of us playing here. Oh, were you, so were you nervous? I was. Uh, I was actually at Square League uh, nervously filming her on my phone and I uh, got her whole 12 ball innings, so yeah. Umpiring and notionally umpiring and actually just shooting. Yeah, so. notionally, yeah, absolutely. It's a great word. <laughs> Had there been a stumping <laughs> shout, how would you have gone? Oh, yeah, no, well, definitely not out. Yeah, yeah. Foot, foot was back. <laughs> <laughs> it's staggering really to think that these kids mm. are growing up that this is just by default what they do, they come and play cricket here. I mean, I don't mm. suppose you, you're, you're recruiting from too far beyond Pombinet either, right? Like mm, this no. is mostly people from this town. It's, yeah, it's incredibly hard to recruit at the senior level. It's probably, we, we probably let it lapse a few years ago. There was a bit of a um, break in, I suppose, kids around 
maybe a few years younger than I was um, when I finished juniors, um, and it really hurt our senior program. We dropped back to two sides because right. we didn't have juniors for a while, and guys like Luke Reynolds and um, present Dave Murphy have spent a lot of time in building the junior program, which has now led to the club it is today. Yeah, you said before you'd never played anywhere else. I don't expect you're going to go and play veteran somewhere else. You, you'll play. This is it. You know, yep. You'll play in the second team. You'll, you'll play in the third team. You'll probably run the bar after that. You might run the bar already. Um, like this will remain a, a central feature of your life even when you stop playing first team cricket. Yeah, absolutely. Try and just try and hold on for as long as I can. I suppose into the, the Div One spot. And how, how long have you been a Div One player? Uh, debuted as a 14 or 15 year old, I think, maybe right. 15, I think it was. So back in 2005 um, was my first game. So, and yeah, sort of was maybe 50 50, probably till I was about 16 or 17, and then been a consistent player since. Since then, and when were those premierships? Those triple, uh, that triple premiership crown that with Luke was telling us about before. You yeah, were. when were they, and what was the best of them? So this is my fifth year as uh, club captain, and um, yeah, we lost the semi last year with uh, a few too many drop catches in the semi that cost us, and then the three previous um, uh, flags before that. Oh, three on the trot, three, three on the trot as yeah. club captain, so, and there was a couple of um, T20 in those three years. You can't miss that. You and I had a little bit of correspondence about, it, it's almost a centenary, like you've got a, an early premiership team from, is it 1926? Yeah, 1926, 27 was the club's first ever flag, actually. It took them some time to win one. And um, there's no team photo that existed, so we sort of hunted down the scorecards and there was a few unfamiliar names and Fred Lemon was one that yeah, no one seemed to have heard of mm -hmm. or any, anyone knew anything about him. And, uh, with the name Lemon, I thought, oh, I'll ask, I might ask Jeff Lemon if uh, he might be his great grandfather. Well, I, I hoped, but uh, sadly he wasn't. But your dad did a great job digging up Fred's family, and uh, we did make contact with him in Tasmania and got a lovely photo of Fred standing there with a cricket bat. The uh, the team of the century. Now, I'm interested in this because there's a there's a strong theme. There's one family who've got five players in the team of the century. And they're not all from the same time period. You've got some from the 30s, some from the 40s. You've got 50s, 60s, 70s uh, across this period. That's the Boyds. So there's a lot of Boyds there. Is this the kind of place where there are a few families that have a big influence on the community and, and, and on how places like, community places like the club come together? Yeah, absolutely. And the Boyds were, have been here right from the start. And not just at the cricket club. Uh, there was J.A. Boyd played in the first game in 1883. but. Uh, the Pomonite District, they, you name the, com the community organisation, there's been a Boyd running it, involved in it. They've uh, been huge pillars of this community, so, uh, and especially this club. Um, they're a little bit light on the ground for numbers at the moment, but we do have a Boyd playing under 13 boys cricket and wow. playing under 13 girls cricket. So, so that sounds like about six generations of them. I think it might be generation seven okay. now. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And this, I mean, this club is beautiful. The ground is lush. Like it's it's so level we were driving along thinking okay we've got to keep an eye out for a driveway that might lead to a cricket ground and there was no doubt when we saw it okay this is obviously the spot how do you keep such a good facility at the standard that it is and it, you know where it, uh, it it just looks like such a quality cricket operation uh, we've got a great group of volunteers and and people who like to get involved um ground wise our president dave murphy does a wonderful job he uh he won't let anyone else on the mower. He'll, he'll mow it four or five times a week at this time of year. But uh, he does a great job. And yeah, we've just had a lot of community support to do it up. We've, we've put in pop-up sprinklers in recent years, which we had some government support for, which is fantastic. We had, uh, used to have travelling sprinklers and had a oh. problem of, of theft <laughs> while being on the highway. And uh, I suppose it, it is very close, right? It is, yep. yeah. You'd, you'd have a few players chasing um, stray balls across that highway when someone gets onto one over the deep mid-wicket. Yeah, no, it's always look both ways when you get hit over the road, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we try not to let that happen too often. And how long are you going to stick around? Uh, you know, you're, you're putting in a power of work at this club. Is this a, a lifelong passion? Yeah, no, I'm not putting in a power of work to, to, to leave it all. So uh, I've got no no plans to stop playing or stop being involved. Um, I love it. It's, it. It is my life over summer. So I'll keep doing it as long as I can, and especially as long as my kids are involved as well. Well, thank you. You're doing a great job. Thanks for having us down at Pompadour. No, thank you, Jeff. All good. <laughs>